I am live according to what the thing says. Hello, everybody. Happy New Year's. It, it, and, and, and I hope you had a great holiday season. It, it has been a couple of weeks since we got together. Well, mainly because it was the holidays and nobody wants to watch. Oh, oh whoa, whoa. That's me. I got to turn me down. This is the way I, I keep up with the chat. If you can hear and see me, I mean, obviously, I just heard myself and I saw myself. So I, I guess we're fine. So I don't even have to type it in there. Maybe I should type it in there and say I saw myself. Okay. I came out a little early. First of all, hope you all had a wonderful holiday season. We have a very long video today. I didn't edit it. Um, and I took some things out of my live painting. And uh, I was filming while I was live painting over the holiday. I had a couple weeks off. So I figured I'd spend it with some of my very loyal uh, channel followers on Rob Tabletop World. Listen, we've got a big year planned. Okay, last year and a half, uh, a little bit more than that. Um, oh God, was it 19 months now? We're yeah, we've been we've been around a bit. So uh, another five months, uh, we'll be two years with Board Game Geek, the best in the business, brother. So just know it and love it. That's all I can tell you. But on a more uh, scale note, that we're going to be evolving the painting aspect of this channel. Um, we're, we're going to start doing kind of like a little, like you guys know all the basic stuff and you know, I'm still going to keep things basic because this isn't about me showing off what I can do because I really can't do much. It's more about helping you pick up a brush, you know, just that's all you watch. Look how simple it was. You just pick one of these up and boom, you're off painting. But what we want to do is we want to start introducing a, a couple of new techniques, you know, like wet palettes and things like that and, and, and different types of figures, D&D figures. As a matter of fact, uh, Bones has a fantastic line that I've been looking at out of their fantastic catalog here, as you can see. Um, I was there uh, over the well, uh, Thanksgiving um, while we were doing Cthulhu Death May Die. And, uh, oh my God, what a, what a place that has. But after going through that, I want to show you how to do your Frostgrave stuff, your D&D &D stuff. Uh, we've got a couple of projects that are going to be a lot of fun. And anybody else that wants to have their thing painted, and I don't care what company you are, if you want to have it painted here on BGG, either get a hold of Aldi or get a hold of myself, and we'd be more than happy to find a way to get you here on bgg and get your stuff painted uh, matter of fact uh, next week a game that's going to be coming out very soon we're going to be painting their four figures so we'll start two and two uh, i don't know if it's next week because i'm going to dallas next week uh to bgg actually but i am thinking that we will do this as soon as i get back and that's sanctum they got four figures in here this is a unbelievable fun game i saw that uh board game geek and uh con and um it's going to be coming out soon on retail, so why not have a blueprint to help you paint your figures and get more of that atmosphere in there? Because there's plenty of atmosphere in this bad boy, and we're going to do it here. And, of course, we always have so many things to paint. It, there's just a pile. We have Secrets of the Lost Station we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing D&D &D stuff. I want to show you uh, some of the... Um, Stuff from Bones Black, a matter of fact. Uh, let me just go over to my my camera that moves. Oh, oh there, we, there we go. Hold on. Let me move it. We, now, remember, we got to make the noise. Okay, there we go. I mean, look at that. We're going to be showing you how to paint stuff like that and things like that. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's, uh, that's uh, one of the figures that you can get from uh, the Bones Black line. Um, here's another dude here, too who's just equally cool and we are going to be teeing that up uh the chat is live so hey if you got something to say be more than willing to say anything i'm here to answer your questions but most of all what i'm here to do is show you how to paint nemesis so now let's get our little movie going uh we have to do a few things here folks and just to get ourselves right there's the movie all right, let's get that up. I'm going to freeze it right there. And before we go full screen, because we know we go into that eternal, it goes away forever thing. So 
let's just there we go now I'm just going to downsize this so I'm not looking at it the entire time and making myself crazy. And then we'll come up here and we'll make that big screen and boom, we're going to be off and going here. And how to paint Nemesis. Now, let me just tell you one thing and one thing for sure. One thing I learned about painting any type of aliens and before we start running this is there's a little confusion in my brain. Uh, as you can see right there uh, with the figures, and let me just uh, move this a little bit there. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we can see it. Oh, wait, hold on. There we go. That's the way to do it. All right. Um, one of the things that I always have a problem with is uh, with aliens is that when I look at aliens, I either think of Tyranid from 40K or I think of... Um, aliens so there's that balance and which ones to paint i'm going to show you a couple of different patterns on how to do this so if you're one of those people that play 40k you may want to um you know just kind of do a couple of the ways that i'm going to be doing them or you can uh, kind of just make your own thing but i show you a couple of different ways and we're going to talk about it now i have primed these white and i'm going to show you why so let's get our sh our show going here and there we go so um spraying these white i just used a regular uh krylon excuse me krylon paint didn't have too much of a problem right here i have a contrast paint I wanted to experiment and see if i can make it easily done so this is a stylish purple you're going to see me moving my hands because I'm actually live on, uh, talking on the air, of course. And um, we're going to take this and we are going to start working this all over the entire model. I'm not worried about getting it on the base or anything like that. Now, I like to use a cheap brush with this. And, and you can see we just dip right in there. And it's doing exactly what I wanted it to do because I wanted I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with this because it's such a dark purple but I wanted to go dark with, with a little bit of highlight and then be able to build outwards the hard thing is getting the coverage on here now as you can see I'm really working the brush and just you know getting the paint and moving it around and that's what you want to do because you don't want it to pull even if it pulls you're going to be all right uh, because of the way we're going to do this. See how it kind of builds up a little bit on that end there? That's okay. I'm going to go in there and get it. The problem is there's a lot of recesses. Now look at that tail. It's like a giant bone. And what we want to do is... Uh, let me move this up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Hold on. And... All right. There we go. Hold on. I'm going to close this up a bit. There we go. There we go. So that'll fit in a little bit because I'm looking at the other camera. So uh, again, just moving this this around and really wanting to get this all over the place. I also kind of want to get it on the bases. Now you're saying, well, you painted the bases white. Why'd you do that? Well, it's going to help me when I put uh, when I paint the bases, and the white would be too bright. So I don't mind getting that that uh, contrast paint all over. So you can really just take everything. Now, over here, as you can see, I'm wearing half of it. And, uh, you know, you can see that I pretty much, I didn't really get it really, really well. So if you follow my mouse over here next to the queen, this is the queen that we're looking at. But over, over, over to the right here, you can see I pretty much got it all over the paces. So I did the same thing with the queen and just moving that entire contrast. I, you know, you, I mean, how many times can you see me put purple contrast on here now there's a lot of areas because she has a lot of kids that are just popping out of stuff so we're going to be taking a look at that and it's actually going to be a, a lot of fun to check out um does that a little bit better yeah i think i can see my hands a little bit better funny thing about this is is that you know you're you're amazed at how how this just doesn't there we go all right so because I want to make sure that you guys can see everything the way I see it. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we got the Mother Queen, which is a huge and beautiful model. And then uh, one of the problems that I had that was kind of bothersome um, is I did uh, prime these in two different colors. Uh, well, not two different colors, but two different paints. I used a Krylon on, on uh, the mom. 
and on those I actually used GW's um, uh, primer which was a Corax white now the thing that I found and I had to keep on going over them is that the contrast paint kept on receding a bit so I kept on I, I, was, I thought I was crazy I thought I was losing my mind I go oh is my eyesight getting that bad where I have to you know keep pulling back a bit well no that's not the case what what was happening was is that as I was putting that on for some reason it did not like the uh, Games Workshop uh, paint. Now, next thing I'm doing is I am taking a uh, lead belcher okay and that is just a metallic and all I'm doing is taking and going over here. Now I'm seeing this for the first time as you guys are and I didn't edit any of this I just kind of mashed it together so we can kind of go over it. So I'm painting and ma making sure I get the base and I want to get that lead belcher in there because the actual space flooring is yeah you got it it's metallic it's not plastic it's not varnish wood or anything like that it is straight up silver because it's a spaceship and you can see uh, we're, we're doing that and we're going to do that with uh, one of the bigger ones here and I just I move these out of the way so you guys can kind of see I'm going to take a little bit of paint here and we're going to bring out the bad boy here and we are going to start painting away and I'm using a smaller brush there. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know, I'm just trying to get a little coverage. I'm not trying to get over everything. But having that contrast paint bleed over onto that, that uh, base helps put the silver on there. Okay. Or the lead belcher, if you want to call it, you know, go right for it. Uh, the metallic. Let's, let's keep it at that. And uh, I pull a different brush there. All I want to do is get coverage at this point. I think I'm getting more on me than anything else. But hey, that's what we do. That's what we do here. And we just keep popping along here. Um, you see there's a lot of tight gaps. So you want to use a smaller brush to get in there. And that's exactly all I'm doing. I'm just trying to get coverage. Now, look at the top here, um, uh, right here. You could see where that that contrast paint kind of starts to recess from it, which I found very strange. And I had to go over it numerous times. So if you go to use this recess paint, be wary that if you, what, depending on what primer you did. Now, here's one that's finished. I was just showing you how to get started, and then. We actually get the lead belcher right onto the metal plating and all that other cool stuff that we wanted to do. Exactly the way we want it. So I wanted those nice and dark. Next thing uh, we're going to do is, again, we're, we're pulling out our lead belcher. Is that what it is? Hold on. Let's see what the kid does here. I probably mixed up these videos a little bit. I'm actually going to take a sip of something because I can feel my... Yeah, and uh, you just want to make sure I go over a second time. Only this time, I'm a little more thorough. And also, I just... I took a real lot of it off. Remember how the aliens had like a metallic look to them? So I, I decided to try on one of the smaller guys to put a little bit of... Uh, I think it was Runesmith on there. And just kind of touch it in there because I was going to go over it with a wash. And I wanted to see if I would get that metallic feel like, like we did in Aliens. I only did it on a couple. I didn't care for it. But you can do that as well. The other guy there, I'm going to take a different type of paint. And I'm going to dry brush over him. So I'm going to take a Gene Steeler Purple, right? Gene Steeler Purple. You know, it reminds you of those guys. What did you think about Sundrop version of these aliens? I haven't seen it. Uh, I just painted my own. I was I was happy with it. Um, let me put on my glasses so I can see your name. I'm sorry. Bigwig! How are you, my good friend? If you had seen those green aliens and red ones. No, I had not. And I just decided. I just decided to go with what was in my head. And um, by taking that Gene Steeler purple after I put that very nice wash on there, I kind of just went over these. You'll see them a little better when we do the mom and, and stuff. I really take it off and I just try to hit the highlights here because I wanted to put some depth into our 
little alien friends. These are just, um, these are little bugs that are little babies that pop out. So, again, you know, just trying to come up with ways that if you did not get the sun drop uh, version of this, that you can just paint them quickly and get them to the board. And I think that's sometimes one of the most important things is just getting, you know, getting some paint on there. See, I don't like that. So I decide, uh, no. see, I even talk about it. I go, well, that looks like garbage. Let's not do that. Um, the next thing that I wanted to try out is that once I put that Gene Stealer Purples, I wanted to take some Blue Horror. And I really wanted to, yeah, I want to get it in and take it right out. And then I'm going to take my little rag there and I'm going to take it all off my brush. Take it all off. And all I want to do is get as much of this off. And I really work that brush into the paper towel there. And then I'm going to pick up my guy here because I'm experimenting with the little guys before I go to the bigger guys. And I just want to just, I just wanted to touch it a little bit and see how that had an effect on it. And I kind of started getting some ideas of what I wanted to do there. Now you really can't see it because those little guys are, well, they're little guys. But uh, you're really going to see this shine through when we get to the bigger guys and how this just really starts to pop. And you can see with the Gene Stealer purple, uh, the stylish purple underneath that, and, and then now with this blue horde kind of uh, pulling out a little bit of their, their uh, detail, uh, it really kind of starts to come together a little bit and I start to go, hmm, I got an idea here. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Because number one, I didn't want them to look like gene stealers. Number two, I didn't want them to look too much like aliens. I wanted it to be a, something just a hair different. And I do three different versions here where I play around with things. And that's pretty much what I was doing. And I wanted to film that and to show you that, you know, you can experiment with some of your stuff and kind of decide what you want to do now I take the no of course you know we're getting a great view of my big hand but um here we go now this is where and you can see I did that just kept on receding back and receding back and I said well let me try something here um I've got the big boy you know one of these big guys here um and I'm going to take some new oil and I'm going to shake that up now that is a wash it's a shade and I said, you know something, I want to go over and I really want to, I want that purple to be there, but I really want to darken it up a little bit more. Plus any of the places that it reseeded, that's okay. I want to go over all the metallic here. See that? Because I want to darken that up because we want to, we want to shade that out a little bit, a little later. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll just take, you know, you see me do me metallics a million times on the channel here. And all I'm doing is taking and moving, just moving it all around. Look at that. And now all of a sudden, it doesn't look so... It, again, we talk about shade. We talk about um, bringing things and giving things dimension. We talk about um, how we want to create shadow. And that's what a lot of these washes do. They help get in those recesses and build depth. Okay, and it's an easy way to do it. And, uh, you know, we talk about it. Now, you could build depth by layer upon layer upon layer of paint. But, you know, if you're a beginner, you really want to play around with these washes a bit. And you're going to find that that's going to give you a whole level of depth that you really want to create. And that's exactly what we want to do there. Now, I'm going to take some of this and uh, I believe... Oh, yeah, here we go. All right, so here's a guy here that, you know, we kind of, we put that, that Gene Stealer purple. And we also, see see how he is right there? And I believe I, I do show how I paint this guy up again. So, again, we're going to break out the Gene Stealer purple. And we're going to do it on a bigger figure this time. And we want to really hit home that you're going to take off a good amount of this paint. Are you going to get it embedded in that brush? But we want to do a dry brush over this, okay? We got, you know, we were able to look at the base. We, we put the new oil over there. We put new oil over the creature himself. He's got this purple blackness about him. Now this is where, yeah, look how easy I'm just going over this. You don't have to press hard. As the paint starts to 
come off, you could press a little harder and, and press onto the high points. That's what I'm concerned about is getting the high points here and really working that brush and, and moving it around. I mean, this is such a joy and such fun to paint and beautiful models. So let's let's uh, let's give our boys there uh, some credit uh, that put this game together and, and, you know, put their heart into putting something out very, very, very special. And uh, if you have any comments, please go ahead, put the comments and, uh, you know, I'm here to answer questions and help you in any way I can. That's what we do here at the Mighty BGG. Board Game Geek, the best in the business ran by you know you know i was i was thinking you know the other day and i was thinking about how much talent is on this channel when you really think about it i mean you got rodney smith you got you got Chaz marler now we got the murph boys i mean the, those those guys are are hysterical and smart we got steph who's brilliant okay i've never seen a girl play games and 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 do as much as that girl can it's just ridiculous we got aldi who's a fantastic leader eric martin that people plagiarize for god's sakes because he's so damn good uh you know I, I you just look up and down and the talent and behind the scenes you know let's not forget that derek's here okay he's the one that makes this all look pretty too so you know expect a lot of big things in 2020 and the new decade okay these next Hey, Board Game Geek's 20 years old this month, folks. Okay, let's hope for another 20 and uh, just really knock it at home. Now, let's get back to the, the figure at hand, hand okay? I, I talked those guys up enough. We're really moving on in there. And then we're going to come with that blue horde, just like I told you. Okay, but do you see how now all of a sudden we have that purplish look now? We're, we, you know, we're really shining that up to, on top there. Now, I'm going to take and I'm really going to rub this stuff off. Uh, where are we at? Okay, we're oh, but Man, we still have another 29 minutes of of, <laughs> of video. So, I, I got to do some talking here, huh? This is long. I didn't really edit it or anything like that. You know, I really wanted to keep it natural a little bit. And I wanted to talk you through. I knew we, that we could wrap this up in an hour. And I think I think uh, doing the whole thing in under an hour is 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 really good because i i kind of show you a couple different things down down the pike here now you see how that's standing up there i mean look how that purple is just beautifully standing and of course i'm talking to the camera so just forgive me you're looking at the same thing here but um now not this is where you really got to be careful see I, I i went uh not so fast my my very old friend and then just nice and easy that's look look you barely see the bristles moving. You barely see them moving. And this is an easy way to do this, folks. All right? And and that's all we're trying to do is show you. We're not going for any paint awards. We're looking to get this on the table nice and easy. You can do it. So far, we've got, what, three colors invested in this? That's all you need. And, and, and you're getting you're getting this, this wonderful, wonderful effect, which is going to be perfect because, hey, let's face it. Those dudes are going to die, okay? They, they don't really don't got too much of a chance here. And we're just taking and I'm just very lightly going over this. Look at those aliens. That's what I'm talking about, son. And then as the paint comes off, you can push a little bit harder. We, you know, we were about to talk about that. And then I started just praising everybody I work with. Okay, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Now, now we're going to just take... Yeah, there we go. Work off the sides here. All right, we're going to kind of want to work the legs, and you just want to keep. And I, you know, and if you feel your brush is too dry, all that paint that you took off on that paper towel, there, it's still a little wet. So you can work your way, you know, you can just kind of move your brush across there, and you just get a little bit more. You get a little, little bit on there, and, and eventually you'll get a feel for this. And you see how they, now all of a sudden they're just starting to sit up a little bit. Watch, watch how the things on his on their back start to come out. See how that all starts to pop a little bit? There we go. That's all we're looking for. We're just looking to bring these aliens home. All right. Now, little rune fang steel. All right. This is a this is going to go over, and we're going to bring that metallic back out. 
All right, that's what we want to do. We want to bring that metallic back out. And I'm really going to take this off, okay? And all I want to do is very lightly. Let's hopefully, yeah, there we go. Oh, see, even I felt uh, a little bit too much there. Just going to go around and just kind of very lightly hit it, hit the high spots. So now we get this really, really metallic look. Trajan, hi from Germany. Miniatures look better and better. Well, thank you, my friend. I'm glad you're you're enjoying it because this is why we do what we do. We want to give some of you that maybe um, don't, you know, kind of get painter's block or or maybe you just are picking up a brush for the first time or maybe you're thinking of picking up a brush and looking for a good project. We try to make it easy for you. We don't go try painting for awards or anything like that. We let the big boys do that. We come here to get everybody involved, to get the most out of your hobby, to get the most out of your game, okay? I mean, there's a bunch of hobbies inside of a box, if you really think about it, okay? Especially when you have a, a miniatures game, okay? Number one, you have the game itself. Number two, you may have to put some things together. Well, that's a modeling aspect of it. And then, of course, there is painting. So you get three hobbies in one box. Where else do you get that? Okay? I mean, when you go buy, you know, crochet needles and a, bo a ball of yarn, you definitely do not get three hobbies there. Unless you consider playing with your cat a hobby. Okay? Because they like yarn. You know, you're either making a sweater or you're not. It's as simple as that. Now, look how the metallic comes out. Now, all of a sudden, it feels like he's standing on there. All right, back to the lead belcher, okay? Um, and I decided to um, just go over these entire figures. Now, I, I moved the camera there. Hold, I'm going to freeze this just for a second. Well, of course, not there. I decided to dry brush these all metallic, and the reason for it is I wanted to see the detail because they're pretty small. Then I took some Keslev flesh just to put their flesh on, okay? Um, yep, yeah, see, we did that one. We did the dude in a wheelchair. You know, kind of, I kind of wanted to just kind of go over everything so I can see the detail a little bit better. So, because I had spray painted those black, so I used some of your shabby bone, uh, also. Um, and I want to freeze this here because this is one of the versions of a guy of the guys I decided to go. Well, let me take a look at this now. I kind of show you what I did with the figures just to kind of get let you know that I didn't forget them, but I did dry brush those all particular colors so I can work my way back but here I decided to try something different um, you know I, I started getting this gene stealer thing in my head you know and, and, and unfortunately that's the way it does when you look at some of these guys because you get that gene stealer feel so I said why don't I put some bone up front there and see how that works okay and see and see what we can come up with so I took one of them and just just did it you know um, and here, I, I went over with a, a Celestial Gray, I believe that is. Of course, hey, look at that. I guessed it without even knowing. And just kind of, after I did the dry brush, I went and I started filling things in because I started, to, I could see things better. And sometimes that's good. If you paint something all black, sometimes it's hard to see the details. So you can dry brush your way out. Now I'm going to take some Agrath Earthshade. And I'm going to go over that bone area. All right, come on, move it up so they can see it, folks. I don't know if you can see that, okay? Well, let me move that out of the way. There we go. And what I do is I just off, you know, sometimes it's really hard to get in the camera. There we go. Look at look at that. I guess I guess I heard myself. Okay? We kind of go go over there and as you can see, putting that Agrath Earth shade really brings some depth in there. See see how that now all of a sudden feels like, yeah, yeah, these guys got something going on here. All right. They're going to be driving that through some of those uh, astronauts there. Oh, look at that little fade there. All right. Now, with Mama Mama Bear there, we, we're going to take and we're going to do the same thing that we did. We already did the Gene Steeler purple, so I didn't want to do that over again and, and bore you to death that. But as you can see here, with her, we did the metallics just like we did. Okay. And, but now we're kind of building her out. And now I'm taking that blue hork. I really want you to see her. Because uh, she is a beautiful, beautiful model. Look at all the children that are coming out there. Uh, they're coming out of the metal woodwork. She's peeling back part of the floor. 
and ooze is coming out. We're going to be painting that ooze. Uh, and then those children, she's holding one of the kids because he's been naughty. You know, she had to scold him. And she's like, listen, you know, you guys are playing around here, running around underneath the ship when you should be eating these astronauts. I mean, what's up here? All right. You know, I, I, I don't write this stuff, okay? This all comes out natural. I'm not a comedian. What can I tell you? So now we're just kind of working that in there. And now you see how I'm pushing that, that that a little bit harder? Look how the legs, the leg scales come out with that blue horror. And now I'm going over the kids. Really getting a nice effect on her. That's what we want. That's how we want to drive that home, folks. There you go. Just working that brush in there. Working it all the way through. Bang, bang, boom. And, you know, it doesn't take a lot. You know, get yourself some cheap brushes. I really suggest when you are dry brushing, use some cheap brushes. It really does help, especially when you're just starting off. Trust me. It's going to make a difference. It really is, folks. Whoa, 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 whoa kid. Hold on to that. And, you know, I, I know this is, a, you know, one of our longer videos. Usually I try to keep it to about 20, 25 minutes. Hey, Barb, how you doing? Everybody knows the wonderful Barbara Allen. And, of course, you know, I'm a big fan of hers. All right, so, um, again, don't be afraid about getting over to Metallic because, uh, you know, we're going to come back over that Metallic. So don't be afraid if you get a little bit on there. Whoa, there's some moves. Uh, Blue Tachys, uh, I, I decided to just kind of go over the top of that helmet. I really kind of wanted to make that helmet a little bit different. And then I kind of start picking out some, some areas like guns and things like that. And just kind of really making this work. I am thinking about painting my minis. This is inspiring, also very relaxing. Thank you. The new school Bob Ross. Well, you know, I'm probably about as old as Bob Ross would have been. So I remember old Bob and I, I paint a lot of things just like uh, I do a lot of oil painting. Uh, with the Bob Ross style. Uh, a, a, a true inspiration to anything I've ever done. So I'm kind of looking around and just kind of, you know, I got this beautiful blue that kind of breaks up some of that metallic. And I'm just taking and uh, working it through. Thank you, Jay. That really means a lot. And just kind of figuring out, okay, well, you know, you know, what do we want to do? We really want some of these figures to stand out. You know, I saw how I did make her hair purple. I don't think I showed that. Uh, but we did, we did paint her hair purple. Just like, uh, in, you know, I took a look at the art. The art was beautiful. I just kind of, I went a different way. And I'm sorry I'm, I'm off camera with these figures. Again, I'm, I'm doing a couple things. I'm going to take some Eshin Gray now, okay? And, yeah, moving everybody around. I'm really going to... I want to work on some of because you don't want them to be all the silver. You want to kind of give them a little bit of a spacesuit type of thing. You want some metallic things on there to represent belts and, and stuff like that. Just paint some happy little aliens. Oh good. <laughs> now we're now we're painting happy little little uh what, what victims. Well, let's just call them victims because they're gonna die more than they're gonna be on. There we go. And just kind of, just bringing some depth by using different variants of gray and metallic. And you really don't have to be overly fancy here. Um, you, you really kind of just want to go with what you feel. And you can see right here, I just, you know, I, I, I didn't, I stopped looking at the art and I started saying, well, what do I want to see? And I think that's one of the things, anyone trying to sell this game, I really want it. Uh, you want it painted? Is that what you're trying to tell me, Vincent? Um, there you go. Boom. And, and just keeping it nice and simple. You see how we get the grates where they're really sticking out? It's been really hard to find. Yeah, it has been, but I can tell you this much. Uh, this copy here, I actually got on BGG uh, on the on the Geek Market. Uh, I was willing to pay a little extra money for it. The lady was nice enough to uh, send it to me. I, I told her, hey, 
you know, uh, I really want to get this because I want to paint it on Board Game Geek. And she goes, well, I have it listed at this price. I'm going to sell it to you for exactly the price that I have it listed. Uh, never will sell this game. Yeah, I, you know, and I'm so happy I was able to get my hands on this. Um, this is really a remarkable, remarkable game. Uh, over the holiday, uh, we did some taping of uh, Space Hulk. Um, and we also did Star Saga because painting this really kind of brought that sci-fi feel that I wanted to pull out. And uh, we're going to be doing this uh, live. So I'm really excited about doing this for you guys. Um, you can either check it out on Rob's Tabletop World or I may even, you know, after next week... Uh, talking to my good friend Aldi uh, seeing if maybe we could do a couple live plays here on yeah you got it Board Game Geek TV I mean you know one of the things that we're really trying to do is number one increase our presence as far as painting things and giving you guys blueprints as well as showing you more than just Euro games and stuff like that and, you know just really being varied and bringing everything for everybody because after all, we all are different and we all like different things. And it's good that we have a little bit of something. We don't have to be the masters of one thing. We can just be good at everything. And that would be good for you guys. There we go. And uh, this Eshin Gray really kind of breaks up the metallic. Um, you know, I play around with a few things here. And I really, really... I really liked how everybody kind of turned out. You know, I, I, I flash a little red in there with um, uh, with, with some Mephiston red. Uh, you also are seeing, um, you're actually seeing uh, some master paints from uh, Bones there. I used a, oh God, I, oh, Troll Hide for the green backpack, which really turned out nice and, and his hat. I really enjoyed that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Bones makes some incredible colors. Um, and I really enjoyed uh, uh, using their stuff. We're going to be showing you a lot more of how to use dropper paints and things like that. We've got so much things, so many things I want to get accomplished in 2020. I really hope I can get, it, get to them all. And, you know, when you talk about legacy and legends, well, there's only one person to talk about. Scott Alden is in the chat, folks. So everybody say hi to the mighty ruler of Board Game Geek TV. Now, as you can see, I'm just working. I'm finding different areas, and I'm just making sure that I get everything that I want to get here. And really just breaking up some of that metallic, because I really enjoy the metallic. Now, I'm going to take you shabby bone. Now, look at that. Look at that mom there. I mean, she looks... I mean, she's pretty ticked off. But I wanted to make her different. I wanted to make her really stand out. And how do you make her stand out? Well, that's real easy, folks. You add a little bone. So you kind of give her that maybe, maybe you know, maybe their lifespan is a couple hundred years. And eventually some of their things start to turn to old rickety bone. So as you can see, I'm just painting the bone on there. Just kind of going with it and saying, you know... I want to add a little bit. I want to make her stand out. I want when she comes on the board to everybody go, you know, this ain't going to be good. There's no way this could be good. And uh, really, really just working that in there. Look at that. I, I actually make a mistake there, but that's okay. I fix it later on. And listen, I don't edit out the mistakes. People are going to make mistakes. I don't care how good you are. You're going to make some mistakes. But the thing is, you can fix anything. You can do anything. And that's the beauty of it all, is that you make mistakes, you have a brush, you have some paint, and you can fix anything. So don't be afraid. Don't think it. The, you know, game's over. Oh, man, I, I missed a spot, or I got a little paint on, on you know, the carapace. Nah, nah. It gets good, folks. It gets good. Just take your time. You know, like the old guy painting right now in this, in this screen. Just take your time. Enjoy yourself. All right? This is a relaxing thing. It doesn't have to be a stressful thing. This is something to bring you p 
peace and accomplishment and then when all your friends and i say this a lot and it's like a broken record here but when your friends come over and see that you went to the trouble of painting the game for them so they can have this experience when they come over and you know it's going to stick with them it's going to move them it's going to it's going to say wow you know something he really cared enough to to bring us the, the very best that he could and it was fun and it made it more fun and and he you know he you could see the sense of pride and when you, when you put those out there and say you know i may not be the best painter but you know something we got painted miniatures let's do this let's do this and this is my version or or my vision of how i saw these creatures and you know something nobody's going to criticize you if they do well remember make them pay for pizza next time or don't invite them remember you are defined by the people that you surround yourself with okay you are defined as a person by the people that you surround yourself with that's a little lesson from an old man okay so surround yourself with good people and you you can never go wrong in life there we go that was free folks see we, we even give you a little bit of free advice here at, at the mighty bgg huh and check in the chat make sure we see everybody making sure I, you know i can see i can see what's going on there you know that i didn't block everything out i think i got how to film this now and I, i'm telling you 2020 is going to be a banner year for for our painting segment toms how are you my good friend how are you yes yes i am look at you you beautiful human being you thanks for coming in here i appreciate it i'm always happy to see all of you i really am it really makes really makes me happy now look at this i mean just look how majestic she is I, and i'm talking about the model not the paint job <laughs> but she stands there and, and you got these kids pouring out of, out of these vents and uh now here's the thing there's there i took some moot green moot green okay and now we're going to paint some disgusting slime because when she peels that back you're going to see yeah you see those drips there yeah buddy zablik how are you doing zablik says always looking good well i appreciate it my good friend look at that all right so we kind of make it well you know she just all those kids hatched and all that goop and everything like that and she's just letting them go this game is number one on my wish list said jade star look at that you want to paint the copy though bro and i just finished the 70th 70, 70th miniature i've painted it just takes practice it sure does it just takes a little time and and you know these videos really really help and um you know there's so many great painters out there too let's not let's not let's not just you know wrap it here but you know there's some guys that can show you some things and there are some beautifully talented people that that have this incredible vision in their head and can do such incredible things what we try to do is just get you to pick up the brush and then find the person that's going to fit you maybe you like what i do maybe you like what somebody else does it doesn't matter it doesn't matter the whole point is to get you to pick up the brush and just see that there's more to playing video games and things like that that you can express yourself and do all kinds of things jeff thompson how are you looks pretty cool rob well thank you so much and look at her she's just she's just so angry and that's what i really like about it she's like you know these kids i can't control them where's the father you know he's working all the time and i'm stuck with these kids when do i get a girl's night out <laughs> you obviously don't you have to kill everybody on board first and jade says she's gorgeous well thank you jade now we're going to take some of that yeah you got it we're going to take some um oh god uh agarath earthshade <laughs> i almost forgot we're gonna take a nice wash and go over this bone really want to just go over this bone and and give it a little bit more depth yeah that's what we're trying to do there and work inside her mouth 
her her fingers and things like that yeah there we go we're gonna want to get the back end don't forget the back end it's so easy to forget the back end just work your way around look at that look at mama there she is angry and has some issues for sure how far are we in wow i i've been talking huh you gotta give me credit here we've got about seven minutes left of this that's not bad all right and i'm gonna take some of that agrath earth shade and work it over that moot green it really does help dull it down a little bit okay and kind of give it a little bit more depth and that's really what we want to do we want to give it a, a little bit of depth there i mean look at that that is one angry mom and that's hey what mom doesn't get angry right and these kids are just i mean look at them just a, a really gorgeous gorgeous model and uh really does a lot of neat things here and um just just fantastic it was was one of my favorite things to paint on the break that i had so you know I, I just really enjoy sharing it with you guys and i decided to try another different model and i pointed out a few different things and again i'm going to point out that we are using an agrath earth shade and galaxy dude hey how you doing my friend always good to see you i hope you're having a blessed day i hope you're all having a wonderful day and uh you know just taking a little bit working it in there really just darkening that up a little bit and that's all i want to do dude those look nice well thank you my good friend i really appreciate the comments they really mean a lot and i decided to just kind of test this guy before I, I i went with the you know with the gene stealer colors and stuff like this but we're, we're gonna i think i'm gonna move things out of the way here i believe and i want to show you the three different guys and i believe this is where i do it hopefully ah here we go so uh i'm gonna take some screaming skull because once that once that 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 paint dries there see right there what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna kind of take a little bit of it and all i want to do is lighten this up i want to lighten this bone up a little bit not much not much Zandabar, thank you so much that's very kind of you to say what a kind gentleman you are i really appreciate it i hope i said your name right because you deserve look at that see how i just very lightly just take the edge of that brush you really don't need much okay to kind of bring that out a little bit you know as, as the paint comes off you can work it a little harder there you go boy, rob that's the way you do it all right see i'm coaching myself on on how to do this a little bit no it doesn't matter how long you paint or how long you ever paint you know you always are unsure of yourself a little bit so don't when you pick up the brush for the first time don't that, that feeling of being unsure, it, it happens every time. You wonder, oh, gee, I hope I can do these justice. And then all of a sudden, something just clicks. All right, it may not look right the first, you know, getting all the base colors on there, but then all of a sudden, you're going to put this one color on it. It's just all going to come together. So I wanted to give this a little... Oh, I never use a holder, but I really... I, I find, you know, as I'm getting older, my hands aren't as good, but... I just always enjoy holding the model. For me, that's how it works. So I, I, I decided to just kind of show you guys. Okay, so that's how, how they look when I do that. And then, uh, oh, lead belcher. Uh, I'm going to very lightly, very lightly, okay? I wanted to check. Now, you see the one on the bottom there? That is our Gene Stealer and our Blue Horror one, okay? And I wanted to see if I just took and went a little instead of painting now this is giving you some ideas on what to do i wanted to take a little bit of that that silver and kind of give it the alien feel instead of a um gene stealer feel so i wanted to just take a little bit of that and, and there's so little see how i go over his head a little bit so now you have a little bit of that alien feel there and just very lightly just hit his biceps you know if the thing has biceps but but kind of just lightly not not so it's so obvious but you kind of go wow that's a weird sheen on there kind of like on on when you see an alien from from the movie aliens 
And instead of putting the bone on there, I went with a, a little bit of that metallic on there just to kind of compare them and see, you know, and to give you guys a different look. You know, you don't have, you know, you may see things differently than I do. So I wanted to give you a couple different looks. See how I just kind of, I just take a little bit of that metallic and I just ease it in there ever so gently and really just kind of really try to make this all work and come out, you know, a little bit over the tail area and, and a little harder on those points there. Yeah, see, I'm even talking about it and saying, yeah, yeah, you know, even though we went with the Gene Steeler and the, the Blue Horror and, uh, you know, like I said, the Deep Purple, look, look at the difference here. Or you could you could add it even, you know, there a little bit, you know, over his body a little bit. Now, I give you like three different variations because here you have the bone and I've barely got anything on there and I'm just working it in there trying to get, okay, well, maybe a little bit of shine on there works over that, that gene stealer. So, and yet yeah, we'll get right into his melon there. There we go. Getting underneath there. And you can see a little spot that I did fix after our, so, you know, you got those two guys and then we got our third guy, okay? Where we just kind of left him as he was. And yeah, you see, that's where we just kind of went with the blue horror and really worked with the Gene Steeler purple. So you have three different types of variations that you can go with. You know, it's it's the one that, that you think will work or be the most fun for you to paint. But any of them work. Yeah, that one's a little more metallic, you know, a, a strain of metallic in there. All right. And that, that really kind of shines. And we kind of show around and how the blue horror really stands out. And, you know, there's three different variations that you could do on all these fantastic aliens. And it's not hard because anybody can do this for sure. And there you have it. That's Ebro. Thank you so much. So I wanted to give you three different variations of it. And uh, we're going to come up here. And we're going to... Oh, there we go. See, now your eyes can focus back in. Listen. Very simple game plan on how to do this. You have a beautiful game like that. You want to paint it. It's something you want to have your friends over. The game plays great solo. The game plays great, you know, with, with a couple, you know, with two people. But I think the sweet spot, people have been saying anywhere from three to four, you know, because you kind of got that uneasiness because you never know what your mission is. Paint these guys. It's simple. You don't need a lot of paint. You can express yourself. You can bring more depth to what is already a beautiful game. I've been waiting to get my hands on this game. Models look great, and they do look great. If you can get the sun drop version, hey, cut, cut yourself some time. I, believe me, I try to do it myself. You know, sometimes I'll buy a game. Oh, these are pre-painted? Give me the pre-painted version. You know, because it makes it easier. Because especially on Rob's tabletop world, let's face it. If I ever tried to play with unpainted miniatures, I tried to do that the other day, play Space Hulk, and oh my god, you, I mean, not, you, you thought about 2,000 people unsubscribe, uh, the way it was talked about, but the thing is, I love painting, I love expressing myself and doing different things and coming up with different things that you guys, and trying to find an easy way so you guys can bridge that gap and do it yourself, that's what we try to do most here, wow, we did all that in 40 oh i think i went on a few minutes early 50 minutes not bad so we got you know another five minutes i'll answer some questions if you have some but most of all what i'm i want to finish up explaining what we were doing you know when you paint when you go to do the figures the actual uh, victims I, I call them victims because they're all going to die somehow um or astronauts, whatever you want to call them, you're going to want to, I, I primed them black. You didn't see that part. Um, so you want to get yourself a nice dark black, prime them up. The problem that you run into is there's a lot of little detail there. So how do you bring that detail out? Well, I took a lead belcher and I just, I wiped it mostly off my, my thing and I dry brushed it. 
and that helped me because my eyes are bad and my hands aren't that good and anymore well, I'm an old guy and um, I was able to pull all that detail out and see it and then creatively I wanted to just build my figure from that I go well you know I really think he'd look cool with with a metallic belt and metallic boots but let's make his pants gray or a light gray and let's take the helmet and make it you know a blue and things like that and as you start to piece things together you forget about looking at the cards and trying to mimic it but you you tend you really try to be creative and, and come up with your own vision and 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 then you have that sense of pride once you once you find it so uh there you have it uh fred fredis oh uh just canceled my pre-painted dice throne adventures minis because i started to airbrush well congratulations that's another thing that you're going to be seeing is some airbrushing too we'll get to that and we will be covering that in detail painting is relaxing trade in i have to proceed to paint my lobotomy minis this year the game i have that i painted i you're really going to enjoy painting those a lot of fun a great experience Woof! we covered it all we've done it all we said it all we have an exciting year planned for you uh board game geek is going to we're going to be painting we're going to be doing games hot games that you guys want to see painted and i'm going to make sure that we have a video and a blueprint for you each and every week to walk you through some of these games that are going to be coming that you're going to want to try your hand at i promise you that we are going to do our best to just keep bringing you the best we can and in, in, in every wednesday when we can now next wednesday there will not be a show because i will be in the air I can't promise I'll get it done on Tuesday um, because I am currently working on our next project that we are going to be painting together. Four figures, and I'm putting together that for Sanctum, a uh, game that I think you all will love very much. So we'll have a painting video on this. And then from there, we've got some great things planned. I really think you're going to enjoy it. Stick with us. Stay with us. Join us each and every week. I promise you. We will do our very best to keep it simple, safe, and fun most of all. Because that's what we do here at Board Game Geek TV. We bring you nothing but the very best. You got the best talent. I meant to everybody else. Um, and, and just so many wonderful things to see and so many creative people coming up with so many wonderful ideas to bring you the very best in board gaming. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, my beautiful puppy is coming out. Come here, girl. You can say hi to everybody. No? It's my little German Shepherd. She tells me when it's time to take her outside and that when the show is over. And she's saying, Dad, I want to play ball. So I don't want you to be online talking to all these people. She gets jealous. And she's saying, basically, come on, take me outside and let's go play some ball. I got my ball waiting. Um, you know, you've been here for an hour enough. You're giving people everything that they need. So with uh, that said, from all the wonderful guys and gals here at Board Game Geek TV, our illustrious leader, Aldi, and of course myself, Rob Orn, I want to thank you for tuning in. And remember, as always, tomorrows are never guaranteed. And be kind to somebody. Be good to somebody. Because it's not only going to make you feel good, it's going to make them feel good. And most of all, just surround yourself with good people. Because they will always do you right. And that's for sure. Until next time, it's your old pal Rob saying, We will see you soon.